You know, the first days of new technology are often harder than the last days of old technology. And what you do with a vehicle like this is you mimic the old technology that people are familiar with and you gradually phase it out. Now, a normal diesel you mentioned has what, about 1,400 foot pounds, right? Between 1,250 and 14, depending on the. And this is what, 3,500? 3,500. Oh, yeah, look. Yeah, when you, yeah, you feel it. You feel it in your back and you feel it go. And what does this weigh? What does this whole vehicle about 45, weigh? 45,000 pounds. 45,000 pounds. All right. So imagine a 45,000 pound Tesla. That's what you got here. And imagine once the firemen drive this, they must love it because it's so easy. There's no, well, I guess you don't really shift anymore. And most, nobody has standard transmission fire trucks anymore, but, but still there's a lot of work to do. Yeah, again, we, we made it to where they would, it would be non, they couldn't determine whether they were in right. a diesel with an Allison transmission or were they in this with yeah. no transmission. Welcome to that episode of Jay Leno's Garage. You know, we try to feature unusual, different kinds of vehicles you don't see on a lot of the other websites. This one certainly qualifies. This is a 2023 Vector all electric fire truck. It is purpose built electric. It's not a hybrid, it's not a regular fire truck that's converted, it's from the ground up. They're built in Florida. I'm going to learn about it just as you will in just a second. Let's meet Mike Vernon. He's the president of the company. How you doing? Great, Dan. Good to see you. This is an interesting piece of kit here. I, I like this thing. Now, you guys, you're in the fire truck ambulance business, right? You have like, what, 70% of the... Well, ambulance, we have up there in the 70%. Right? We're about 40% okay. of the fire truck business. We have uh, 15 companies that build apparatus under different brand names. Right, and this is not a fire truck chassis that's been converted. To, it's ground up to be an electric vehicle, correct? Yes, yes. We build this truck in Florida, as you see it. It's all hand-built, craftsman built, um, right. and then we send it overseas and have the electrification done. Okay, electrification. Okay, now this is done to what they call North American standard. What does that mean? Well, North American style. So uh, European style trucks are much smaller, more compact. Um, the North Americans are much larger trucks. Just like the people themselves. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and and this, is, this is what a fire department would have in their station today. So we work very hard to make sure that it looks, feels, smells just like what they use today, only on electric power. Well, it's funny, you know, because it looks, if you just took this electric, uh, you know, writing off of here, you'd think it was a normal diesel fire truck. And I know a lot of firemen, they're pretty conservative guys. They like, it should look like a fire truck, be a fire truck. You know, the idea, of, are they a little suspicious of the electric thing? Does it take some coercing to the that's make p putting it mildly yeah. so the fire service is is very conservative right they, they don't like electronics they're they need everything to work all the time and right. so you know they're very slow to adopt to change right and and there's other reasons why that is too they you build a fire truck for one station you have 50 in your fleet you need it to be exactly like the other 49 so when somebody's out at two o'clock in the morning on a fire it works just like that truck so there, there's some reason so yeah when you start saying electric even when the city is saying we want to we want you know to lower greenhouse emissions the fire department that we talked to were like whoa 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 you know no so that's why it was very very important to us when we first started putting this together that you could not tell it apart from the other truck so what are we talking here? Diesel's extremely powerful. What is that? How much more power is this than, a, well, how many volts, for example? It's 800 volts, 12 it's 800 phase. volts. Yes. So charging time is what? About two and a half hours from what we, what we consider zero is about 10% of battery life, but right. from 10% to 100 would be about two and a half hours. Okay. So if you got this in your fire station, you would have to, uh, what, three phase? Yeah, three phase, 480 would have uh, to be okay. brought in. Yeah. Okay. So that'd be direct to, charging right yeah yeah, yeah. It's direct okay. charging, yeah all right and compared to a normal typical fire engine more power less power pumping time you know the whole deal what's what's the advantage what's the advantage of this besides greenhouse emissions over a diesel well uh, the the noise in the cab and you'll see that if you drive or when we drive it that um the noise in the cab is is unbelievable you can have a conversation right. while driving it the noise when pumping um we actually have done demos with this where Firemen are like, okay, turn the pump on. We're like, no, the pump's running. We're already right. flowing water. So most of the noise that's created on a fire scene is from from the diesel engine. So right. that that's probably, you know, the next biggest thing is is getting the noise out. But you talked about power. This in this the two motors that we have that power this electric motors 
our equivalent of 600 horsepower engine, right. but where a 600 horsepower engine uh, diesel today would have about 1,450 foot-pounds of torque, this is 3,500 foot-pounds of torque. Wow, okay, I, I was gonna say, because electric engines are known for torque, and torque is what you need for pumping, yes. so it, it, this would probably be superior. Yes, it, yeah. it, it, it will be superior, it's definitely superior, yes. Now, how long can it last on a daily, I mean, obviously, diesel, you just put more fuel in it, and you're fine. Right. I mean, does a charge last the whole day? Do you have to bring it back halfway? I mean, what's the... So what we do typically when we look at a city is we go in and they have, they have like call volumes from mm -hmm. a station and they know exactly how many miles they normally run. So we, we have an, uh, a program we put together that says, here's your, here's your station, here's your normal call volume. We get anywhere between 17 and, eight, and 18 runs without coming back to the station on a typical run on, on a charge, which, which that never happens in the fire service, right? right? So, you know, if you bring it back after one or two runs, you ha you're in the station for 45 minutes, obviously plugged in, because you plug in a normal fire truck when you come back to the station, right. this plugs in and you're, and you're good to go. Yeah, because so. I, when I think about it, fire trucks, you know, I've got a 1940 uh, American La France, and it was Warner Brothers lot truck. It was a top of the line with the V12. Uh, they had it for 10 years. They donated to Burbank. It sat out in the end of the runway, you know. We pulled it back. It only had 11,000 miles because you're on the lot. You go to, you know, you go to A, you go to, you know, you go to stage nine, stage 12. You, and I imagine the main thing in a city, you're not going hundreds of miles, right, on a daily basis. You're probably going, what, maybe 60 miles a day? Something? Yeah, if that. I mean, yeah. it, and it depends on the city. But, you know, people, the first question we got asked when we started talking to fire departments about this, you know, how many miles can I go? Well, you know, there's so many things that go into that. But this is about 145 miles on a charge right. uh, with city driving. It does have regenerative, regenerative braking, so right. that's including some regenerative braking. But again, to your point, you don't put 145 miles on a fire truck in a day in a, in a normal urban type setting. You know, maybe if you're out in a rural setting in a volunteer department and you're running long distances between calls, but that's, this isn't the kind of truck you're probably going to use for that. Can you run a separate engine to power the generator if it does get low? Is that possible? Is it? So we have what's called a range extender in here. So when we met with fire departments. The biggest concern they had is, you know, not very often, but there are times when a fire truck will end up on a fire. Well, they'll have to pump full capacity for six, eight hours, right? And they were like, what happens then? Well, you know, this has about a four hour pumping time on a, nor a normal type pumping. So we said, okay, let's put a, a small ISB diesel engine in it that just runs a generator. The generator will charge the battery. So we charge at about 155 kilowatts an hour. So we can put more power into the batteries than the batteries would be off T taking out at, right. at full at full capacity. Okay. And how many gallons a minute can of water can this pump? So this is a 1,250 mm -hmm. GPM or gallon per minute pump. Okay. Again, when you're on a fire, you're usually not having full open everything running at 1,250. Right. The, most fire trucks, I mean, the pumps standard pumps go from about 1,250 to 2,000. 1500 is probably 75% of the market. We went with 1250 on this because obviously there's just less friction. The more, the bigger the pump, the more friction you're gonna have, the, the faster it's gonna draw the battery. Sure. So we oh. feel like this is a good compromise. This kind of looks like command central. What do, what do we have here? So th this is a, a pump panel and, and the thing you don't, most people don't know is every single pump panel on almost every single fire truck is different and it's set up so that like this says just discharge three. When you pull this discharge, there will be a discharge three, which might be a deluge monitor, a front bumper, water will come out of that. And as I said before about every fire department does this differently, it's really important that this is set up. So we, we would set this up to whatever the department's needs are. This just happens to be kind of on our prototype demo we set up. Every one of these colors then, there's a coordinating color on the other side where the discharge is, so you know that if it's yellow, that's X discharge oh, on the okay. other side. Okay. One thing that'd be a little bit different here is if you look at this. So normally you have pressure control valves that are controlling the uh, diesel engine, the RPMs of the diesel engine to right. make the, the, to make the um, transmission turn, which then turns the pump. Obviously we have no transmission, electric vehicle, so this is all done electronically. So you have your intake pressure, so that would be if you were on a hydrant, the amount of pressure coming in, and then you have your discharge pressure, and 
you know, it's important you keep this to where as you open lines, you increase the, the this is what the throttle, we call it a throttle, but obviously it's electronic, but right. you, you know, as you open and close valves, you have to be adjusting the pressures in order for the person on the other end of the line not to have either go low on water or go too high on water. Yeah, you know, you mentioned electronics, because most, I think, fire guys like mechanical stuff. Not, a, You know, I was in that, uh, one of those U-2 planes, you know, they used to fly, but, and it had been updated with all electronic equipment, but it had, and the oil pressure gauge, a big, it looked like something from the 50s, you know, with the old filigree on the writing, and, and I, I felt underneath it, it had an oil line going to it. And I said, how come this is an oil line? Because he said it's measuring real pressure. It's actual oil pressure. It's not going through a sending unit. And we want that. We want to know exactly what it is, you know. And I wonder if that's the same sort of thing with firemen. Are they a little suspicious that electronic instruments? Yeah, that, or... you're, you're absolutely <laughs> right. And, and, and I'll give you a quick example. Years ago when we went to electronic engines, the throttles are controlled electronically. So the, fire, the, the manufacturers of all the equipment put in electronic where you could just dial things up and down. The fire departments hated it because right. they wanted a what used to be called a Vermeer hand throttle. They wanted a hand throttle that was connected to a carburetor. So right. we had to put back in the throttle, even though it's just a wire <laughs> going to the well, electronic, yeah. no, but that. it made them feel like it's it's more connected. You know, Mark Twain used to say, I like progress. It's change I don't like, you know, <laughs> yeah. and that's kind of it. But I understand why it is, because you get, it's got to work every time, all the time. Something a lot of people might not know, I've got a 1911 Christie fire engine over there. I've got my 1940 American LaFrance, and I got an Amasked, one of the really early ones from the 1800s that's steam driven and steam pumped, and every piece of firefighting equipment on that works on, because firefighting equipment, thread pitch has been the same, same. since the last hundred years. Yep. So any fire truck anywhere, like mine is a hundred and something years old, I took it to the LA fires and I could have hooked it up and pumped there because all my hoses, everything else fits on it. So it's really interesting. I mean, it's a really kind of set in their ways and there is a reason for it, obviously. People come from outside of our industry into our industry on the fire truck side. You know, we're a publicly traded company and so you get, you know, people that come into this business and they, they think, oh, well, let's just go build the same thing over and over again and be more efficient. It, for your, what you just said, that can't be. It has to be specific for LA County, specific for this customer, but then all, like you say, the threads, all right. the things that they use every day are, are you know, are interchangeable e e even to this day because, let's face it, they've been putting out fires this way for a long, long right. time. So when this pulls into the firehouse, I guess, this is this your charge port? Yep. You just yep. put, and it looks like a standard plug that you'd have in a Tesla or any yeah, other kind of thing. Okay. It's the standard CCS1 plug. So yes, that's, it's a fast charge plug. But it's fast charge, okay. I mean, an awful lot of mind-boggling amount of stuff here. And how many gallons of water does this hold? So this is 500 gallons of water with okay. 30 gallons of foam. So you can, you, you know, you have a foam system, so 530, right, right. yeah. But obviously when you get to where you're going, you'd hook up to a hydrant, right, okay. Right. So does it go hydrant to here to fire? Or does it, or do you, when you pull up, do you just bypass the, the 500 gallons in here and go directly to hydrant? So you can, do, you can do it two different ways, right? When you get to the fire, you can put water in and then fill your tank and then keep con drafting off your tank, or you can go straight to hydrant. A lot of times, especially with electric truck, it's better to go to hydrant because the hydrant might be flowing at 100, 110 PSI. So the more PSI you have going into the pump, the less work it's going to take to put the water out, so yeah, it's better. Yeah. So yeah, the other thing that, besides the plug, the other thing that's a little different on this is this fireman's loop. So this is for the electric battery packs. So basically, if you were to have some sort of an, uh, an issue with the truck, let's say it got in an accident or it's got sensors in the battery packs that if they start to discharge quickly, they automatically cut off and isolate within the, within the battery pack. But this is a way for you to do that, like say an accident happened. And we have a loop on the front, the back, and the side on the production vehicles so that any side of the vehicle you're at, they can do that. So is an electric fire truck heavier than a standard diesel truck? Yes, it's yes, okay. definitely heavier. Well, you got all the batteries. Yeah, yeah the, ba the batteries are the weight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. I mean, that's just an amazing amount of... Well, this is why, to be an engineer uh, on a fire, fire department, people don't realize how much training they have to have. Oh, because yeah. all this has to stay balanced. It's really a science, understanding water friction, and, and again, how to keep the, how to keep the, 
discharge PSI level as you're opening and closing valves is really important. And then, yeah, this is a foam system here, so this would run your foam, so so you can. That's for electrical foam. fires. And yes. Like, yeah. Now, is this, is there a tool needed? Yes. To, yeah, a special tool yeah. for this. So, yeah, they have all kinds of, we call it their, their brass, but they have all kinds of tools here, so this would come off, right. and then you would put your connection on Okay, it. and then fill it, and boom, yep. okay. All right, very good, very good. Well, let's see, we're gonna drive it in just a minute here, but uh, tell us a little about the inside. What is different there? So, the, the, it's kind of an interesting story on this one. Um, when I first got the video from Scotland, where we have it electrified, all I could hear was the seats rattling really loud because fire, fire seats are very uncomfortable and they have like these brackets that hold your breathing air bottle in them. Well, you don't normally hear that in a diesel truck because the diesel's loud. Right. So I immediately called uh, uh, one of our vendors, Joe Mirable is a big time car guy that runs a company called U United Safety, USSC. I said, Joe, I'm gonna have more politicians and city councilmen and news media people in this truck they're not going to understand why these seats are uncomfortable. I said, I need a set of leather fire truck seats. I said, but think Bentley. Right. And right. so when you look at the seats inside there, you'll understand that he uh, he knocked it out of the park. They're oh, that's cool. really funny. But okay. other than that, Jay, everything inside that truck is exactly what you would get in in a standard fire truck, with the exception of the the gauge cluster is a little right. bit different, obviously, for the fire. And there's really no effort to make it aerodynamic or anything because you're not going fast enough that aerodynamics would play a role in it. So. Well, and, and you talked about the fire service not liking change. Right, right. right. It, it, you know, there's been attempts made at making fire trucks look a little more modern. Right. And they've all failed because people want it to look like their fire truck. Look like a fire truck. Yep. I mean, that's why they're red. Right. You know, that's because <laughs> it, it's a fire truck. Right, you know? exactly. Very good. I remember back in the day, they always used the most expensive paint you could which was, and the color was always red. That was the most expensive color. And that's why they really wanted the fire engines. And they had the gold filigree and all that kind of stuff on it. You'd be surprised. We still do a lot of that yeah, uh, no, striping and everything. No, it's but. really, well, I mean, if you're a fireman, you're bonding with your, this is your fort, whatever you want to call it, you know? I mean, it's it's pretty amazing piece of equipment. I have a customer right now that he's been on the same fire truck for 18 years and he's, got two years left before he wanted to retire. They told him he had to take a brand new fire truck and he retired. Because oh. he said, I'm not going to go learn a whole new piece of equipment. It, that truck to him is like, it's like a glove. It's, it, it, it fits him, he knows it. He just thought, I'm too, I'm too far along in my yeah. career to have to go learn. Still something. on the first wife probably. Yeah, yeah, probably. There you, go. there you go. Well, much like Tesla and even the new Rolls Royce Spectre, the batteries are kept as low as possible for handling. It's, are they low in this, or is it, it doesn't make any difference? Yeah, so we, we looked at two designs, actually. We looked at putting them up along the cab here to try to keep, you know, kind of the weight in the center, and then we did the weight and balance of putting them low, and we decided they were much better low. So as you see here, this oh. is one of the three battery packs right down okay. here. Yeah. They're all sealed. There's 327 kilowatts of power stored in the batteries. There's one on each side and then one in the rear. Um, and then they're designed to where we can drop them straight out of the bottom. So should you have to either replace them or get into them, you, there's no surgery you need to the vehicle. And then they're... they're um, Are the batteries custom built for this vehicle or do you use sort of off the shelf Yeah, batteries? so we're using LG Chem batteries, so right. off the shelf. Um, one of the things also, we have a battery cooling and heating system. It's, it's very unique to what we're doing but the, the optimum temperature in the batteries will keep the charge longer and make them right. perform so better. So it's at 74 degrees? Yeah, it's like 74 degrees. Okay. And so you'll see when you drive it on, there's a gauge that tells you that the batteries. I assume liquid cooled batteries? R right, so there's uh, cooling and heating plates. Right. So in between each stack of batteries on the top and the bottom and in between we have these plates that run coolant through it. And then the sensors say whether they want them cooler or warmer and, and, that's, and that's where they run. And that runs off, there's a separate 12 volt battery in this truck that just runs that system oh, and see. then charges off the 800 volt. Well, a lot of EVs have that. You have the separate 12 volt that runs lights and everything like that. Uh, lithium ion batteries, yes. are they? Okay. Yeah. Now, when they're running, are they running flat out full capacity when you're pumping? I mean, are they drawing way more power than they normally would under road going conditions? Um, they, they do. They, it depends on the pump, right? If, right? Like I said, if you have the hydrant running and the pump is not needing a lot of work, it, it, it's, it's only reacting to what you're putting to it. But yeah, if you, 
if you run this off what they call draft, where you drafting out of a water source, right. that takes a lot of friction, and then running all your lines wide open, yeah, you're definitely at max. Well, very cool. Well, let's uh, let's take a look at the inside and see what we got here. Well, we got it outside because we couldn't open it up inside because of the ceiling on our light box. All right, let's take a look at the power plant here. Open her up. And what we have here, electric power rear wheel only, right? Not yes. four wheel drive. Yes. It's rear wheel drive only. And you still have a, a diesel engine that's used, but only as a range extender. It doesn't drive the vehicle in any way, correct? That's correct. There's, yeah. there's no mechanical hookup between the uh, diesel engine, which is up there, and anything to do with the drive line or the pump. Right. Everything is, the connection is back here. Well, this is great. I mean, it's really accessible. Yeah, the, the tilt cab really, really works because you can get in, service the engine, service anything you need to do here, and suspension, brakes, everything is very accessible. And what do we have here, about seven gallons of diesel fuel to run? The, yeah, this is a DEF, so this is diesel exhaust fluid. That's the urea oh, that, yeah, that you right, have yeah, for the yeah, after yeah, treatment, right? right and right. then the other after treatment is, is on the other side. Okay. So just a few things to point out. So these are your two 12-volt batteries that start the, uh, the vehicle up. There's another 12 volt battery right so back. So you got two, but it's still 12 volts. It's not 24 volts. 12 so volts, you... yes, sir. 12 volts to run the cab chassis. Gotcha. It's starting a uh, starting of the vehicle. You have another AGM 12 volt battery back here that runs the all the electronics right. on to the uh, on the on the EV side of the the, the unit. Up here you have uh, one of the power motors. There's three of the same size. There's a power motor right underneath there. And as you see, there's coolant lines running to all the electronic motors and all the electronics. The radiator, even if you didn't have the diesel motor, you would have a radiator with fans on the front. So those fans come on when they sense that the electronics need cooling. So that's how they cool. And then up there on that tray above that, you have a power steering pump and you have an, uh, an air compressor, and those are all run uh, off the 800 volt off elect electrically. And those are your inverters right there? You've got okay. the inverters across the top here, and then you have the two engines back here, so there's two electric motors of the same motors, but they're coupled together, and that's where you get the power. The power goes to uh, a transfer case, so you can shift the power into pump mode, or you can shift the power into the drive line, and then that's what drives the vehicle. I love the fact you still have leaf springs like you had in 1918. Just massive overbuilt leaf springs. And it just kind of makes me laugh that the, you know, you've got the most modern technology available combined with just stuff that works. Yeah, and that's, again, we talked about fire service. They don't like you know, new technology. They, they know how to service these. They know how long they're gonna last. But one of the most important things that really you can see now that we did with this vehicle is we wanted every component to be what would be on their fire truck that you don't everything you see here if you bought this as a diesel you would get all the same componentry so from servicing it in their shops or having availability of of uh, aftermarket parts and aftermarket service from the brakes to the suspension to everything you see no no it's really fascinating now we're going to show us how you pump some water yes sir let's let's bring the cab down again that's great I thought we were going to be pushing this thing. I don't know why that. <laughs> well, what's funny is they come with these cab tilts that are manual. Yeah. There's no possible way anyone would ever be able to manually open that, but they put it on there just for that reason. Now, we talked before about the pumps and how quiet they are. It'll make some noise, but not nearly as loud as it would be with a big diesel motor on it. Yeah, so. you, you have to have hearing protection on when you're okay. standing in front of a pump. So we're going to turn on the pumps now and pump some water. That's Jimmy over there. You might remember Jimmy from Yellowstone. He was the guy that beat up the bikers, remember? <laughs> remember the foreman? Yeah, that, that's him. So, yeah. So any of you girls, that's Jimmy. Okay. Ready to give it a shot? Let's give it a shot. All right, whatever you do. So come up here. We have to hit the pump. Hit, hit pump here. Oh. That'll turn on the pump. As you can see, the PSI came up. So now you have some PSI, so if you just open the front jump line, you'll pull start the water. Pull that out. Turn 
Now, obviously, you can get way more pressure than that if you need it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. we had a very, very low pressure. That's like for an ashtray fire, just that, yeah. Oh, pretty cool. Well, let's take this thing for a ride and see what it does. You know, it's an amazing thing about electricity. Something can weigh a million pounds, and it fools you into thinking it weighs 1,500 pounds. I mean, you, you've, got, you've got power steering. And I, I imagine you just have one gear in this like you would in any electric vehicle. Yes. Is that correct? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, sometimes in heavy vehicles, they might have a two-stage transmission. Yeah, we, but we put a two-speed rear end in as yeah. an option for if you have to do a lot of hills. Yeah. Now, do you engage that manually, no, or will it do automatically. it automatically? You know, Mike, like most electrics, you've got a tremendous amount of torque, but just a regular amount of horsepower. You have probably, what, five, 600 horsepower? Yeah, it's rated, we, we algorithm it to 500, yeah. mimicking an ISX-12 500 horsepower, but it actually okay. has 600 horsepower. Okay, so you got, let's say between five and 600 horsepower. But the thing is, what you have is just mind-bending torque. Now, a normal diesel you mentioned has, what, about 1,400 foot-pounds, right? Between 1250 and 14, depending on. Yes, and this is what, 3500? 3500. Oh, yeah, look. Yeah, when you see, yeah, you feel it. You feel it in your back, and you feel it go. And what does this weigh? What does this whole vehicle about 45, weigh? 45,000 pounds. 45,000 pounds. All right, so imagine a 45,000 pound Tesla. That's what you got here. And imagine once the firemen drive this, they must love it because it's so easy. There's no, well, I guess you don't really shift anymore. Most, nobody has standard transmission fire trucks anymore, but. But still, there's a lot of work to do. Yeah. Again, we we made it to where they would it would be non. They couldn't determine whether they were in right. a diesel with an Allison transmission or were they in this with yeah. no transmission. You know, the first days of new technology are often harder than the last days of old technology. And what you do with a vehicle like this is you mimic the old technology that people are familiar with, and you gradually phase it out. You know, I mean, you saw that. With the car industry, Franklin cars were air-cooled, but because people were used to cars with radiators, they put a fake radiator in the front, so people think it had a radiator, but it didn't really need it. You know, like this doesn't need to look like a traditional fire truck. It just does because it gives people a sense of uh, been there before, they know what they're doing, you know, that kind of thing. And I think it also makes people comfortable. Like if yeah. they, feels normal to them, it feels like their other truck, then they're more comfortable with the technology. You know, you can't sell something before it's time. You know, when Chrysler came out of the airflow in 34, it was revolutionary, because it looked like a, one of those streamlined trains, you know? People were like, ooh, that doesn't look like a, I like a big grill in front. I want people to know I got money. I bought that big grill with the big, you know, with the big giant emblem on the front. It is so relaxing to drive, it really is. It's just like driving any other electric vehicle except it weighs 20 tons, is that about right? Yeah, yeah 20, 20 tons and some change. So very, very cool. Well, Mike, I want to thank you for bringing us around. You know, we like to pride ourselves in showing unusual and different vehicles. And this is certainly one of the, one of the coolest. And this is, I think, what the future will be. I think most big cities will have electric fire trucks because it's not sitting on a street corner spewing out diesel fume and, and you know pollutants and all that kind of thing so very good my friend thanks i'm going to reach over and shake your hand there thank you, you jay for that i can do that because it's electric i'm driving with one hand there you are <laughs> hey i'll see you guys next week let's go put out some fires